Hello and welcome back to game three uh, with Death and Taxes in Legacy. Uh, my name is Dukes on Twitch. I am a small time Legacy streamer. Uh, I own the Green Sun Zenith, which is a Legacy Maverick website. Um, hopefully, we get our game. It's a little bit of a lag. Uh, we're currently one on one, going up against Rugdelva and down against Eldrazi Post. Uh, some really good matches, some really fun matches, um, but just didn't go our way, which is part of magic. Um, but yeah, really enjoying the deck. Uh, I haven't really played much DNT since I got on sort of the Maverick train um, over the past six to 12 months, but the deck's, I think, in a pretty good place right now. Um, there's a lot of really good players playing at it right now. Um, and obviously putting up some good results. Uh, we're on the play against Boba, which I believe is on Maverick. Um, so I really like this hand. We're going to keep this um, and see where it goes. Balan, Siga, and Popper. I could say that so wrong, and I, I probably just did. Um, has definitely been pulled up in the, the Maverick monthlies that we do on um, the Green Sun Zenith from time to time. So... Uh, pretty good assumption that that's the deck they're on. So starting with a Vile here is a, a big advantage for sure. But the Underground Sea kind of shows that it's not going to be the case. Underground Thought Seas definitely makes me think it's something like Storm. Um, other contenders are things like uh, Death Shadow, especially if they took the Swords to Plowshares there. Thalia. So, I'm pretty happy to play Ancient Tomb here and play Thalia, so we can actually play around uh, Days, which does allow us to happen, and we're just going to pass here. It's a pretty nice draw there. I think Thalia is great against both decks, so... Volcanic Island, interesting. Pyromancer, okay. So this is looking to be something a little bit more towards uh, Grixis Delva. So happy to tick up the vial here. And <laughs> Thalia is pretty nice. So let's go for an attack for two first. And play Thalia. Holding up Charming Prince. So we have a lot of removal for... Or a lot of play, sorry, against a lot of things. So bolt targeting. Lightning bolt targeting giver of runes. I think in response, uh, we're just going to activate Aether Vial and flicker it. And then it's going to concede. So a pretty nice start from us. Um, you know, you can't really draw it up better than that. Especially with our hand, once it got online, you know, Thought Seize becomes a dead card. Inquisition, if they play it, becomes a pretty dead card. Um, Palace Jail is always interesting. I don't like it against this sort of deck, where they do have access to going wide with Young Pyromancer and getting the crown. Or maybe even playing something like Trinim Nemesis. Uh, so I like the Council's Judgments. Just in case they play Liliana, or, of course... Uh, the Boogeyman being um, Trinim Nemesis. What don't I like? Thalia is okay. I think Mirren can definitely come out in this matchup. Um, I really like the first strike from Thalia. Um, Prelate seems great, especially with the Chalice of the Voids. I think we can probably drop on Thalia's. Uh, probably even like a Stoneforge is still great. Maybe the Recruiters. We don't really want to be looking for too many cards. The recruiters are nice for card advantage, but I'm not sure if it's really a, a match where we want to be looking. I probably want to keep one in. Let's let's be honest. I can probably drop a Tomic. And maybe even just one Stoneforge. Oh, going too much here. Tomic's actually quite nice, especially the body, and especially if they're playing Delva. So I'm going to keep the, the three Thalys in, three Stoneforge, two Charming Prince, two Flick Wisp, keep the Recruiter package with Prelate and Thalia. Walking Bliss is just really nice because it can actually trade with a young Pyromancer. I think I'm pretty happy with this. 
Could bring a rest in peace, but I haven't really seen too much yet. They could be playing Gurmag Angler, but we do not know. So I'm going to just submit this, see what happens in game two. And if we get up, we get up. If we don't, we can run it back and, and see how we go. Uh, sadly, this isn't a great hand. Uh, a bunch of two drops, which is nice, but we don't have any white mana at the, at the, at the foremost. We really want to be casting some sort of one mana spell. Um, whether it's Giver of Runes or Aether Vial or maybe even a source to plow shares on a, on a Delver. So I'm going to mulligan this. And this hand's actually not too bad. The Tomic is really what we're relying on, but I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to drop the Caracas. I want to have a Wasteland proof white mana source. Or mana base, sorry. Ponder, okay. See what they do with the Ponder. They chose to shuffle, so I'm pretty happy to Wasteland here. I think turn one Ponder is a pretty key um, sign that they are looking for a land. Especially if they shuffle. So Wasteland for them isn't that great, especially that now we get to play uh, Aether of Oh, just these, uh, these planes in a row. Yeah, and this is a... Uh, Definitely a reason for them. Hmm. This is an interesting one here. I think I want to go the Giver of Runes. It doesn't really matter. Let's, let's, let's go Tomic. It does matter in the sense that we want to get our Giver of Runes online first. So that um, from then on out. Wow, they're just going to concede. Um... So maybe that was a misplay. Maybe I should have actually cast the giver first. We weren't in any rush. And really what I want is that giver to be online as soon as possible. So if we did go go giver there, the next turn we can even play Tomic around days if they do draw into a land. Um, but obviously they just thought that nothing was going to be coming out of that game. Which is pretty rough. Um, it's not really how you want to win a game. Uh, I feel bad for my opponent, but you know, that's magic sometimes. So we will take it uh, and we'll... We'll see you in game three. That was that was seven minutes, but um, sorry, in game four. So uh, my name is Ving Tuk on Twitch. Uh, I'm a legacy streamer. I stream on Wednesdays at 7:30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, and usually Sunday mornings uh, at around 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Uh, you can catch me on Twitter at Tuk's on Twitch on Twitter. You can catch me on YouTube, and all my streams are on YouTube uh, at slash c slash Tuk's on Twitch, uh, and then also on my site, The Grand Sun Zenith, which is a, a site dedicated to Legacy Maverick. So. Thank you very much for watching my uh, my games, if you want to call them that. Uh, we'll see you in, in game four.